my name is Mariela. I'm also one of the students that went to Veracruz, Mexico to do um, her CIS project. Mine is on assessing the knowledge and beliefs about the HPV vaccine among uh, mothers um, who are residents of the state of Veracruz. So Veracruz, as you can see, is like this yellow state right here. Uh, we were specifically in the city of Jalapa, which has a population size very similar to that of Omaha. My classmate Marcela did a very similar project as well here in Omaha with the Latino community. So she'll talk, you, she'll talk to you a little bit more about her side of the project. Um, in the state, we have um, a little bit over a thousand health centers. And we have what they call jurisdicciones sanitarias, which oversee these health centers and are in charge of distributing all the supplies, all the vaccines. Um, one of those health centers that gets um, their materials distributed to from these uh, other sections is the Centro de Salud Dr. Gaston Melo, which is the clinic that I worked in. Um, this clinic has a lot of different sections. They actually have a, a, vaccine, a vaccination section. Upstairs, they have a mental health section. They do a lot of um, work with reproductive health, uh, and, um, IUDs, uh, implants. They even do a lot of vasectomies. They, have, um, they do a little bit of everything, essentially. This is a picture of part of our team. To the far right is Ashley, actually, the previous student that was just presenting. Um, and we have some people here from the University of Anahuac, which were instrumental in putting this project as well. My mentor, Dr. De Alba, and Dr. Chamberlain is also here with us, which is when he came to visit our site. Um, and here in the middle, we have Dr. Mesa, who was also very uh, helpful in moving this project forward and helping me. Again, I worked at the Centro de Salud, um, and I recruited my sample from their, their body of patients. I was looking to do a questionnaire, which is a questionnaire of 72 questions. Um, and we were looking to get 100 women with children between the ages of 9 and 18 who still lived with them. We did not care whether they had been vaccinated or not uh, with the HPV vaccine. Um, actually, that was kind of our, our goal here, is to get a random sample of mothers with sons and daughters, or just sons or daughters who have been vaccinated or not. The uh, potential participants were informed of the study by their medical provider, so they would go in. Uh, we had a day where we uh, met all the staff at the clinic and informed them of uh, my project and what I was doing, and many of them were very helpful in um, recruiting um, participants for this questionnaire. So I just started doing some initial results here. Um, this is very preliminary again. Uh, we asked a variety of different questions, whether they were satisfied with their medical care, um, whether they believed vaccines were generally beneficial, uh, whether they, and we asked them about their knowledge of the HPV uh, vaccine and of HPV itself. So whether they knew if it caused cervical cancer, whether they had vaccinated their kids or not. Um, so these are just some of the uh, results that I got for some of these questions. The majority of them were very satisfied with their medical care. Um, and they, this is a little bit more split up, but still the majority agree either strongly or just agree that uh, they do trust their child or their children's health care provider. Almost, so almost all of them have had heard of, the, of HPV, and also the majority of them knew that it caused cervical cancer. Um, so we did have, uh, I think, a pretty strong understanding of um, HPV or HPV vaccine, even if it were at a very superficial um, level. However, um, I would think that knowing about HPV, at least at some point, or knowing that it could cause cervical cancer, I would suspect that the vaccination rate would be a lot higher. And for Mexico, the vaccination rate is indeed higher than it is here in the U.S. It's about 80-some percent. Um, but in part, that's because in 2012, the HPV vaccine started to be included in their national immunization card, but it's explicitly for girls. Um, it doesn't say anything about boys. 
I was told by uh, many of the medical staff that if I were to do this same study, but in a private hospital, because this is a clinic used by uh, people with more public insurance, but if I were to be in the private sector, um, it'd be more likely to find more boys that have been vaccinated. Um, and we see that here, uh, the number of sons that had started but not completed the vaccine series um, was just one. Um, and then for daughters, it's a lot higher who have uh, started the vaccine series, but it's still a lot lower than the national um, average. Um, so again, those were just some preliminary results here. In the future, um, along with Marcela, we'd like to kind of compare our projects um, and the results that we got for each of our sites and try to see what, um, what knowledge and beliefs mom ha moms have about this vaccine and why they choose to vaccinate or not their children and whether any demographic, any key demographics um, change between Mexicans in Mexico or Mexicans in the Omaha community. Um, so I have some research experience working the, with the Latino community here in Omaha, but working with the Mexican community in Mexico was very different. Um, I have found, not that this is true uh, for everybody, but in my experience, I have found it. It was a little easier to work with the Mexican community in Veracruz. They were very willing to take the questionnaire. Um, they even provided suggestions for me. Uh, they have a program, the government of Mexico has this national program called Prospera, which helps families of low income. And they provide education and workshops on health, on nutrition. They provide them, I think, with some money every month if they meet um, certain requirements, if they attend a certain number of workshops, uh, if they have frequent um, doctor's visits or as needed. Um, so many of them suggested that the program Prospera that they go to should include uh, an HPV or HPV vaccine education uh, workshop. Um, another thing that was a bit of a, well, this is what was a bit of a challenge was navigating this new social and professional etiquette. Uh, in Mexico, it's very different. And actually, it was Dr. De Alba who helped me out a lot in trying to navigate that because he is a, a trained uh, medical doctor in Mexico, so he kind of knows how to navigate those waters, and it was uh, through him that I was able to do that as well. Um, and this was my first time kind of executing or putting together a project from start to finish, even though I'm still um, in the middle of it. But that in itself is a very new experience for me, and, um, and I'd like to either continue doing um, work on HPV or, or anything related to maternal and child health. Um, some of the future studies that I'm suggesting is to explore maybe new approaches in uh, HPV vaccination in the U.S., especially among boys, but also in Mexico. Um, and this last point I have mentioned already, and it's kind of in the works here, um, we'd like to compare these perceptions about HPV and the vaccine between Mexican nationals in the U.S. and those in Mexico. Um, some of the strengths for this project is that almost all of the questionnaires were completed um, at a 95% completion rate. Um, we had a nice mix of mothers who had sons or daughters who had been vaccinated or not. Um, and also the questionnaire asked a variety of different uh, questions on different topics, which I think opens up um, future um, studies or potential ideas for potential studies. So maybe some could be focused on general health care. Some could be focused on um, HPV information from maybe specifically medical doctors or family members, because um, those are some initial questions that we did ask in our questionnaire. Um, limitations, uh, due to time restrictions, this was a bit um, more of an exploratory uh, study. Ideally, I would have liked to have done a pilot study there um, and uh, adjusted my questions as I saw fit. But again, because of the professional etiquette as well, it was a bit more difficult to do that. Uh, future career goals, I'd like to continue to 
work um, internationally, um, and also, like I mentioned, expand my uh, research uh, experiences in other areas of interest, um, specifically in maternal and child health. And with that, any questions? Questions, comments for Mariela? Yes, please. What are the different um, social and professional etiquette things that you have to do with? Um, so, what I experience in Mexico, it's a lot of. Um, so, you really have to kind of talk with people a lot, and um, there's. What's the word? Um, you kind of have to. It takes a while to kind of get what you want or what you're asking for. So you really have to be talking to people. Sometimes you have to talk to different people within, let's say, the same clinic. I know Ashley had a bit of a harder time with this, where she had to talk to almost everyone in the Secretaria de Salud about her project, and then everyone had to be completely informed about it um, before she could even really uh, do anything. Um, for me, it was a little bit easier, but um, things tend to be a little bit more bureaucratic. Um, so that's, I think, part of the reason why that's a bit of a struggle. And it's not like in the US where you can email someone that you may not really know and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm looking to, I'm doing this project on something. Could you help me get this information? In Mexico, it's like you really have to get to know the person a little bit. Um, it takes a little bit more time to kind of, before you can ask, um, could you help me with this? So that was one of the things that was a bit different. Other questions? Just a comment. You know, as I listen to all your presentation, <clears throat> I think you all learned some useful street knowledge that, you know, uh, that then might be good to share with the next people that are going. You know? And uh, it would also be nice to, to each write read a one page, you know, of, right. of uh, what I know that I, you know, as, as I was said, if you went back a second time, you wouldn't have all that, uh, you know, getting up to speed now. And, um, you know, it's almost like what I wish I had known when I went there. Going in. <laughs> that I could yeah. teach somebody else was going there. It does take a lot of patience, too, um, to try to navigate. Yeah, but you know, the, you know, your, your uh, insights could really help somebody else do it quicker. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, one comment that I'd have, and just an observation, <laughs> it appears that in Mexico, and in many other countries, there are not very many vaccine refusers. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, in the United States, we have a pushback on childhood vaccinations for a whole variety of reasons, many of which are false. But, um, and, and this stuff is still out there on the internet. Most of those studies that were correlated with autism and so forth were fraudulent and have been withdrawn but it's still out there and it's fed a uh, movement of vaccine refusers in our country in other countries uh, the uptake of vaccination for hpv has been great i think rwanda had 94 percent for the two two uh injections on uh, in a school administered program so it's quite different and public perceptions are important. Yes, and I did not really come across anyone that was um, against um, getting their children vaccinated. We did have a question that asked them, uh, if there was a vaccine that could prevent cancer, would you want your children to be vaccinated? Everyone said yes. There was another one that asked, if there was a vaccine that could prevent the common cold, would you want your children to be vaccinated? Almost everyone said yes, but we did have some no's. And those were more because they, uh, uh, the answer that I got or the explanation that I got was, well, I think the body should have like a natural way of, um, it was like purging of like detoxing, which is why they said no to that. But it wasn't, it's not anything compared to uh, what we see here. How in the long run is this going to interact with the study that Ashley did? You know, if everybody gets the vaccine, everybody will have antibodies to you know, HPV. So you won't be able to use that as a screening? Yes. Uh, so I, to be honest, I haven't really thought about how it would yeah. interact with her study. Um, 
I had been more focused on how I was <coughs> Marcela study. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if everyone's getting well, I, what I am concerned with here is that even though all these girls are being vaccinated and the vaccination rate is very high, and of the boys are being vaccinated, um, and of course Ashley is focused on um, female um, screening methods, um, but I think. If anything, it shines a light on that we have to focus on the male side. Well, another uh, sort of um, outcome of HPV infection is oral cancers now, yeah. which we're being seen in men a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And so it, it, it is important that men get the vaccine. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was just, I realized this is a pre pilot. Yes. Pre, pre, pre pilot. Right. But, but I'm thinking about the design and wondering if you considered, um, I guess, the generalizability of whatever you end up finding. In other words, where you're doing this and with whom is obviously going to be a limited subset of the whole population. Right. How might that, uh, how, much, how might you think about that and, and perhaps modify your design in the future? Um, well, it, I guess that is another limitation is that I'm focused on a very, very small, or I'm uh, getting these answers from a very, very small population um, because it's one state or one city in one state of Mexico, and Mexico is a huge um, country. Um, if there was a way where we could get, I guess the problem here is I'm asking about knowledge and beliefs. Uh, there is a way to get uh, data on whether children have been vaccinated or not, and we could get that information level and that would be easier but trying to uh, understand why they've been vaccinated or more importantly why they have not been vaccinated um, I, I don't know how I would modify uh, how I could modify the study and make it easy and not have to do that everywhere yeah no, you know? I, I, uh, this is a difficult question. We all, yeah. have, to, we all have to face it. And I didn't, I didn't no, 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 <laughs> not at all. It's a very good question. But, but um, you're, you're doing this in a, in a hospital setting as well, in a clinic it's, setting it's a clinic, as well. Yes. So you might think about those are already mothers who have come to mm -hmm. that setting. So think about how you might expand that in other ways that are feasible, obviously, yes. and, and get a more generalizable population. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.